What's going on guys? This is Sydney coming once again with yet another makeup tutorial video. Um, today I'm going to be using a foam latex piece uh, provided by Thomas Superno. Um, he also provided me with the brushes and his own um, uh, makeup line which is Pax Paint. Um, if you want to see more of his products go to fxwarehouse.info and you'll see everything there. And so let's get started. Um, this is actually my first self-application uh, with any prosthetic. So um, yeah, that is, um, it was pretty much of a challenge and I think I pulled it off. So uh, let's watch. So what I'm doing here is I'm pulling off the flashing and you always want to pull off the flashing and never cut it off. Um, so right here, what I'm doing is I'm just uh, brushing um, Prosade onto my nose using one of Thomas's B Delium Tools uh, brushes, really nice brushes, and I'm I'm putting this prosthetic on my nose first, uh, so that I can start on the inside and work my way out with the prosade glue. So now I am going on the uh, the bridge of my nose and brushing the prosade onto my eyebrows as well because I'm going to line up the brow um, second. So I do the nose first and then line up the brow around my eyes. And now this is a, just a generic piece. So it's not going to fit properly. So um, you're going to have to stretch it and maneuver it just to make it fit the best. So generic pieces are never going to fit awesome, but the good thing about foam latex is that you can stretch it and uh, move it around so that you can fit it to your own face. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm basically just applying layers of prosade onto my uh, skin and applying the, the prosthetic um, while the prosade is wet so that I can still maneuver the, the prosthetic. If, if I don't lay it down in the right place, then I, uh, because it's wet, I can pick it up and move it um, to where I want it. Now once it dries, it's going to stay there, so you'll have to lift it with a brush and 99% alcohol. So if you make a mistake and it's down and it won't come up, just use a little bit of 99% alcohol and um, you can totally lift it and maneuver it to where you want it. All right, so basically what I'm doing is I'm just, you know, I'm still just painting on um, the prosade with the angle brush, the angled glue brush provided by um, Thomas and B. Delium Tools. All right, so I'm fitting it. All right, so now I'm going over the lip. Because this prosthetic goes over my lip, I have to uh, glue it onto my lip, a little bit over my lip, and I'm just stippling on, and I'm working on the edge of it right now. I'm using a little bit of prosade to um, sort of fitch, uh, fix bad edges on the lip. So you can see that I'm just going over the edges with Prosade because you ne don't necessarily have to get right to the edge up under the uh, appliance. All you have to do is get close enough and then lay down the edges with Prosade on top of it. Because what the Prosade is going to do, the Prosade is going to seep through the prosthetic because this is a porous foam uh, prosthetic. It's just going to seep through and glue down the edges um, for you. All right, it's looking good. I'm getting it laid down pretty well. And now I'm just powdering the lip um, just because I don't want my lips to stick together because of the uh, prosade. 
All right, so I slowed it down a little bit so you can look at how I'm just slapping. I mean, you know, I'm probably putting a little bit too much prosate on there, but this is how I lay down the edges. You just want to put prosate on the edge and it will seep through the thin, thin edge and glue itself down. Yeah, I'm really going heavy with the prose. Generally, what I would do is I'd lay down the prose probably like this, get a white sponge, put a little bit of water in it, and dab it on the edge just to texture it out so it's not big globs of prose on there. But this is just a demo, guys, and um, don't judge me on my wrongdoings. <laughs> Uh, all right, so now I'm going around the eyes. The good thing about this prosthetic is it did fit around my eyes pretty well. So I'm just basically laying a, a, a layer of um, prosade around the edge, and it's pretty, it's laying down pretty well. So this is not a bad uh, prosthetic a, at all for around my eyes. But definitely, if you're going to work around somebody's eyes, make sure they keep their eyes closed because either they're going to open their eyes, and their eyes can be glued open or they're gonna get their eye glued shut. So just make sure their eyes closed and then after you powder it, then they can open up their eyes. And that's what I did with that one eye. I powdered it with a brush so that I can open it. And I'm using the nice angle brush to get up in there. And you'll see me do this. You'll see me use the, the uh, back edge of one of my brushes to uh, push down the prosthetic to hold it down and you don't want to just get your brush uh, your back of your brush and do that you want to put a little bit of 99% alcohol on it so it won't stick to the um, prosthetic because it's gonna stick if there's glue there it's gonna stick and if it does stick you can always get another brush and pry it off with a little bit of 99% see I'm using the back end of my brush to, to um, force the prosthetic down and there I go again, holding it down, holding it down. I have a little bit of 99% on there, and now I'm powdering it so my eyes don't stick together. All right, it's looking pretty good. Um, you know, laying down some more, more edges. Um, all right, now we have come to the Bondo stipple stage. Bondo stipple is, it's basically a prose that is thickened. And I've added, uh, I made this, so I've added some cabosil to it to make it a little bit more thick. And it's basically, if you have a bad edge, you apply this to the edge. And it will basically, um, as long as you do it properly, you can hide the edge with it, smooth it out. I usually, I generally apply this to an edge, and then I stipple over the top of it with a white sponge. A little white sponge with a little bit of water in it, because it will not stick to the sponge if you have water in it. And so I'm using a spatula to spatula this on the edges and smooth it out. And then I'll go over it with a uh, sponge with a little bit of water in it. And so that is what I'm doing here. All right, using the spatula again. All right, and I'm doing it around the eyes as well because I maybe have a little gaps around the eyes. And I'm sponging it with a uh, wet sponge to make sure it is textured and it's not too smooth so it blends in well with the prosthetic. And, you know, generally this one, this one had some pretty good edges. So I didn't have to do a lot. And right there, I, I saw bubbles in the prosthetic, so... What I did is I filled the uh, the bubbles with uh, Bondo stipple. Um, generally, you want to do that before you apply and let it dry and um, everything like that. But you know, I'm on the fly. I'm winging everything. Uh, this is a, you know out of the blue thing. I just one night I decided to apply this to myself, and that is what I'm doing. And now I am using a powder brush to powder the whole piece, just to make sure nothing is sticky before I start working on it with paint. Ah, oh, look at me. Oh. <laughs> All right, so now this is Thomas uh, Supernos uh, zombie kit. These are his zombie colors, his zombie packs colors. This is, um, you know, his packs is made a little bit different than normal packs. It's made with a uh, PPI beta bond. 
So, you know, it's a really nice product. It works really well. I've used two types of packs and I, I really like this, this uh, pack set that he provides. It's really, really nice stuff. And so what I'm doing here is I'm trying to decide what undertones I want to use. Because I want to seal the, the la uh, foam latex piece um, because, you know, I mean, you have to seal a foam latex piece with packs. So I'm sealing it. I'm trying to pick a color. So I've picked a, a dark green color to seal it with um, for the undertones. You have to seal it because if you're going to use an alcohol or watercolor or any other color on, on the piece, you have to seal it with like a Prosade or a, a Pax just so that you can paint on top of it. So I chose this sort of darker green because I want to do a lighter color on top of this and I want this darker green to show through a little bit. I really like this darker green um, and this is an orc prosthetic so I'm I've uh, picked colors to uh, fit the orc. So I picked darker green and I'm going to go over with a lighter color. Um, you'll see coming up. And so what you want to do is you want to get a nice coverage. You know, people generally don't like to use PAX paint on the skin, but I have no problem getting it off. Um, just use an isopropyl mirror state. Usually gums it up, comes right off. Or I just get in a hot shower and it pretty much rubs off pretty easily in a hot shower. And then I use isopropyl meristate. Um, so I have no problems using it all around the eyes, the skin, anywhere. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a brush to fill in all the little gaps that I've missed with the sponge. I used a white sponge to uh, basically sponge it all on. And now I'm filling in the gaps with a, uh, just a, you know, not a great brush because I don't like to use my really good brushes with Pax Paint because it's just a little bit harder to get out. And so I'm just painting in all the detail with uh, the brush around the eyes, the ears, and everything like that. Just so that the wrinkles will show through once I go over with the lighter color on top. And so I've started the lighter color. I've, I'm, this is still from the same zombie kit, uh, from Thomas's zombie kit. And I'm, I'm sponging on a, it's like a grayish, bluish green sort of color. And I thought this would be perfect for an orc. So I'm sponging this on. I'm just a, you know, a light sponge. I'm not going too hard. I'm not trying to fill in the wrinkles or anything. I'm just dabbing it on. Because I want some of the wrinkles to show through. So I'm just dabbing it on. I'm going to do a full coverage across it. And I want to sort of see spots of green uh, through this color. You know, the, the lighter the lighter I go with this, you know, the more translucent I want it to look because, you know, skin is translucent. I want to see stuff up under the skin. And so it's looking pretty good. Uh, I'm liking it a lot. When I was doing this, I, you know, I, I was getting really excited, you know, being that this is my first piece I've ever applied to my face. And first piece I've ever painted on my face as well. And first piece I've painted full with just packs. Right, it's looking really nice. All right, still just sponging it around, making an even tone, and it's starting to look really, really nice. Covering all the green with it. All right. looking good I'm starting to act like a an orc and now I'm taking a brush and I'm filling in all the gaps that I sort of missed around the eyes because I don't want these big green spots around the eyes I want to sort of blend it in with brushes another cheap brush you know that I'm using and now I think I'm going in with a with a new brush this is my smallest stipple brush this is V Nils uh, favorite um, uh, brush um, so I'm stippling around the eyes, just a thin layer. I'm, it's, this is the washy layer that I'm using because I'm, I'm mixing a little bit of water in it because PAX is very um, water soluble. And so um, it just mixes, you can thin out uh, PAX with water and it works really well. So I'm just going over it, just filling in some gaps that I thought I needed to fill. 
And now I'm going in with a darker brown uh, with one of my you know cheaper brushes. Going in with a darker brown, a washy dark brown. So I'm mixing a lot of water with it. I'm just going around the eyes. Um, and I feel I'm filling in cracks, like I'm filling in, you know, wrinkles, I'm filling in my nose, around the eyes with it, to give more detail, just to make it look really nice. Any place that I want it to look a little grungy, I'm putting this brown, this washy brown in. And then uh, if I go too heavy with it, like if I go too heavy with the color, I'll get the, the white sponge and I'll sponge it away. I'll, I'll just tap it away with a white sponge. You'll see me tap it away with a white sponge if I think it's too heavy. Like right there, I just tapped it away, I tapped it away. And now I'm, I put my green uh, tooth stain that I make, I've already put that in my mouth just to test it out to see what it looks like. And the good thing, it, it, it stains the inside of the mouth too, so it looks really nice. All right, now I think I'm looking pretty good, all right. And I'm doing it around the mouth, around the nose, sponging it up, I think I look good. So now I'm going in with some PPI Skin Illustrator palette. Um, this is the Grunge palette. This is one of my favorite palettes by uh, Premier Products. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a chip brush, one of these you can get from Home Depot, cut it at an edge, and I'm going to stipple on, like, you know, splatter on some browns, some greens with 99% alcohol because these are, of course, these are alcohol uh, activated palettes. So I'm going to use a lot of alcohol because I want the, the colors really, really thin and really translucent just to uh, break up the skin tone, just to give it some nice flakes in there to make it look really, you know, a little bit more realistic. Oh, looks like I got it in my eye. Uh, so if you're doing this around a model, you, you definitely want to tell them to close their eyes before you do this because this is going to go everywhere. So just make sure their eyes are closed. Um, I'm doing it to myself, so uh, I should know better. And it's starting to look really good. And Pax Paint has a sheen to it. So you'll see that this is kind of shiny, but I liked it. I didn't want to knock down the, the, the sheen of this. I just wanted it to have the sheen because I wanted my work to look a little, you know, a little oily and nasty, you know. So what I'm doing, I'm, I'm still spattering. I'm going in with some browns. I'm going in with some greens. Just spattering it on the skin to give it that uh, nice, you know, textured, you know, skin sort of uh, skin tone look. And um, it's starting to look really nice. All right. I, and these teeth are also provided by Thomas Supernal. Um, he uh, made these teeth for me. They're really cool. So I sort of stained them up with a little bit of uh, PPI palettes as well as my mouth stain. So this is the final look. Looks really good. Um, I, I'm really proud of doing this with all PAX paints, no other colors. All of Thomas's zombie kit is what I used on this as well as I used all of, uh, all of Thomas's uh, brushes, also with the, the V nail brush. Um, so I think it came out really, really nice. I love the teeth. For this being my first um, prosthetic that I applied to myself, um, foam latex, it really came out. This is the final look. And this is the, uh, the PAX, uh, Thomas's PAX that I used. So um, I just want to thank you guys for watching. So make sure you go to my website, ishootthedead.com. Follow me on Instagram, I shoot the dead, And definitely check out a lot of Thomas's products at effectswarehouse.info. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching.